The smoking ban was introduced four years ago and today we're going to talk to some publicans and see how it's affected their business and also talk to some pub goers and some pub lovers about how it's affected the way that they socialise. So what do you do? I'm the landlord of a pub in Belvedere which is on uh, the outskirts of London. And how has the ban impacted upon your business? Uh, we've lost trade by about 40%. 40%. And yeah. would you say that's down to the smoking ban? Yeah, definitely. Not many people come to our pub have stopped smoking because of the ban. Yeah. So what would you like to see happen? I'd like for pubs to be at least given the choice if they want to be a smoking pub or a non-smoking pub. Mm -hmm. And also for larger pubs. My pub's are quite a large pub. So if you have, you know, it is possible with the technology nowadays to have, you know, half the pub smoking, half the pub non-smoking. Hello. 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 Can I come and ask you some questions? Yeah. Why is lifting the smoking ban important to you? It's killing the clubs, completely killing the clubs, completely. And how have you seen the atmosphere in your local pubs change since the ban? Well, the, the, there's two sides of it really, is the financial as well as the sort of social side of it. I mean, financially, we dropped over £2,000 a week in turnover. It's the fact that, like we, we've got some ladies 60s and 70s, they're saying to me, you know, we come out for a drink, we come out to have a, uh, we, we like a cigarette and play bingo. Why are they making us go outside in the cold and the rain? And, and I think that's the issue, which is why we support this campaign where we're looking at to have the choice of being able to have um, a separate room. So why have you come along today? I've come along because I feel so strongly that the smoking ban is counterproductive. I'm sick and tired of us being told by government how to live our lives. And... For us to now pretend somehow that legislating against people's private choices is a good idea is really to say that the state can tell you how to live. As somebody who believes in freedom and civil liberties, I think we need to tell the government they actually work for us and if a lot of people want something to change, then they should listen. Why are you here today, Christiana? Um, to support people's right to be able to smoke and, and the pub's right to be able to choose for themselves. If they want to have smoking in their pub, then that should be up to them. So you'd like to see the law change? Yes, I would like to see the law change. Okay, thank you very much. Some, some smokers, like myself, are lifelong smokers from childhood to older age. Um, and I think we deserve some consideration. You know, the government hasn't minded taking tax out of my pocket since I was eight years old. And now that I'm an adult and able to make my choices, they now decide that I should be excluded socially and I should have no rights as a smoker. Um, I'm also here to protest about the rise of smokerphobia since the ban. Uh, and also the rise in the number of jobs that are being advertised to non-smokers only and the fact that there is no legislation to protect smokers from this kind of discrimination. OK, John, why are you here today? I'm here to uh, learn and to support this campaign to save the pubs in England. Hopefully, uh, my countrymen will see it and want to save the pubs in Ireland. It's interesting, isn't it? Because before the ban came in, nearly 70% of the, the UK public said, actually, we don't want this ban. Right. And what's happened now is the pubs have closed. It was just introduced and unfortunately it was the draconian nature of it. It was introduced, every law we have in our country has clauses. This had no clause. It was absolute. Um, that's what's wrong with it. It must be possible to create an environment where non-smokers can go, and there seems to be very few of them in the pubs at the moment, where they can go and have an area of the pub, and the smoker can go and have an area of the pub. Why are you here today? I'm here today to support the amendment uh, uh, of the smoking ban. I'm against it because of a whole range of reasons. First of all, because it's, it's, it appears to have led to the closure of so many pubs who just can't attract smokers anymore. Uh, I'm here because I think it's an infringement of our human right to smoke something that's perfectly legal. Um, and I'm here because it's good to see an organisation getting together to try and do something about it. I think this is just one manifestation of a much larger and wider problem, which is, um, to use a hackneyed phrase, a nanny state which uh, attempts to regulate in some uh, microcosmic degree every single facet of our national life. Well, we just feel that uh, some of the pubs and clubs of Britain have been shut down over the years and we just wanted the choice for people who want to smoke should be given an elegant smoking solution. I mean, in the end, where do you draw the line of people telling you what you can do and what you can't do? And if we just sit back and go along with it, what will be the next thing they take away? What do you think the implication of the smoking ban has been for you? I go around my clubs and they're talking about it and they said, yes, it's been devastating because uh, in the area that I live, um, they've got some places where there's adequate provision for putting a 
something outside for them to go outside to have a smoke. And in other places, they don't have that. And this is the problem because people, well, we're not going to go down to the club tonight because we can't have a smoke and we're going to stand in the rain. I'm here um, to oppose um, the fact that um, the government has destroyed a lot of people's social lives and we elect governments to run the country, not our social lives. I'm here because I don't like the state telling grown adults what they can do with themselves in their personal lives, in their homes, and I think they've stepped too far into people's businesses. It's not, I'm not a criminal, I am simply a person making a choice. Yeah? I'm dubious about whether we're at a stage where I'd say it's criminalised, but they're certainly trying to denormalise smoking. OK, so what would you like to see the government do? Would you like to see them repeal the law? Or? I would like to see them amend um, the current law and to allow um, businesses to make a choice. I absolutely think you should regulate the air quality in um, public spaces and uh, that can be done um, by you know, installing much better air conditioning units or what have you uh, or saying this pub or establishment is a smoking establishment and having other places which can choose to compete on the basis that they are non-smoking establishments. I think, I think that's a perfectly acceptable way of running things and I think that's the extent to which I think the current law has gone over the line is by you know, dictating that you just simply cannot go to a pub and have a fag with your pint. I think in reality what it's doing is a lot of people aren't going to the pub. It's not a social event. It's not in small towns and small villages. It's the focus of the community still. People are still more likely to go to the pub than they are to go to church. So I think it's undermined uh, small communities in particular. It's the infantilization of uh, adults and taking away their own social responsibility for their actions and treating us like children. I'd like to, to be, to be honest, to go further than this uh, proposal, I'd like landlords to decide whether they're going to have a smoking pub or a non-smoking pub. And uh, that way it's, it's down to property rights and who owns the pub decides what the rules are in the pub and the customers can choose to go where they like. I'm joined here by Nick Hogan who was jailed for allowing two men to smoke in his pub. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, basically, uh, I, I, had a, I ran a pub in Bolton in Lancashire, and uh, after the smoking ban, I took a stance that, well, this is, this is completely and utterly wrong. It's going to damage the industry. We are just exercising. We just want to run businesses. We want to be left alone. And these people in Westminster should stop interfering in our lives. Um, what do you think the most damaging impact of the smoking ban has been? Uh, I don't know you're asking the right person, because... First of all, I live at home. I don't go out to work. Why are you against the smoking ban? Well, uh, because of my friends as well. I mean, I'm saying, yeah, I mean, uh, pubs aren't health clubs. They're not health clubs. You don't go there for health. You go to drown your sorrows, a lot of people, and they want a cigarette as well. And I pointed out, I mean, the notices I had printed was exactly the same type they put on the cigarettes, and it says death awaits you even if you don't smoke, which is perfectly true. But in our shallow society, they think the choice is smoking or immortality, don't they? They told you to give up smoking, drinking, rich food and sex. He says, will I live long? He said, nobody will seem that way. That's telling you time is elastic, isn't it? Yep. That's the joke. Time is elastic. But we all think that. We know that. Not the medical profession, they think time is fixed. Uh, their view of longevity in life is not mine. I don't want a, I don't want a long life if it's on their terms. I want it on mine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. I'm here because more than anything I'm worried about the way in which increasing government legislation around smoking and drinking is really starting to clamp down on public spaces. The smoking ban means that people are no longer able to be themselves. They feel like they have to be forced outside to have a discussion. They feel vilified and kind of marginalised. I think that's deeply problematic. It's quite interesting talking to the guys here today because actually although a lot of them are publicans, they're not really they're not really annoyed about the smoking ban because they're losing money. They're actually very annoyed that everyday people are being told what to do. They're being told what to do, they're being told how to socialise and they just don't like it. It's more about freedom for these people and freedom to, to socialise as they see fit much more than it is about profits.